What is up? Welcome to Creative Cash Flow Planning, day one. And day one, we are talking about happy little money trees. Happy little money trees. I am so excited for this workshop. Honestly, I'm just excited that I get to wear this wig and I didn't have to do my hair. <laughs> right? Um, so welcome to Creative Cash Flow Planning, day one. Happy little money trees. I'm so stoked to talk to you guys about what is going to look like what it would look like what it would feel like what it would mean for you guys to have a cash flow planning system that actually feels really good to you so when you are jumping on say hello and say hi and tell me uh what cash flow planning budgeting has felt like so far for you in your world so this is the thing this is why i use cash flow planning because budget is like a four letter word <laughs> in most households. Budget has a lot, like a really negative connotation for a lot of people. And so I'm like, okay, well, let's not call it budgeting. Let's call it cash flow planning. Because truthfully, that's all it is. We are making a plan for what is happening to the cash that's flowing in and out of your world. It's just cash flow planning. And so that's why I call it that. And we're going to let it be that. The biggest thing I like to say about a cash flow plan or a budget is it's not something that controls you. So many people are like, oh, I don't be on a budget. I don't want to be told what I can and can't do with my money. I don't want to be told what I can and can't spend. And they feel really controlled. This idea of a budget feels very controlling. A budget is not something that controls you. It's something that you control. And so the most important thing that I want you to get out of today and especially out of the entire three-day workshop is this gets to be fun. Like you get to have fun with this. You get to enjoy this process. And so since we are doing a Bob Ross theme, since we are getting all kinds of creative up in here, make sure that you have something to draw on and with. So I've got my colored pencil and my piece of paper. So we're going to do a little activity and I am going to periodically throughout the video kind of remind people of the activity we're doing in case they jump on a little bit later. But go ahead and grab your piece of paper, grab your colored pencils or your crayons or your markers or like whatever feels good to you. If you are my mom, you're probably hanging out in front of a canvas with acrylic paints right now because my mother is an abstract artist. So this is like second nature to her, right? So I've got my colored pencils. I've got my piece of paper. So make sure you've got that and say hey when you're jumping on and let me know how you feel about this because I feel like I'm rocking this. Like I feel like this is good. I like this a lot. And you might be like, um, Bob Ross didn't have green hair, Nicole. Like what's up with that? Well, green money, it goes together, right? And also this whole theme is about you getting to make this yours and your own and you getting to let it be what you want it to be and so i'm rocking the green wig okay this is what we're doing so get your piece of paper here is our art activity for the workshop that we're going to do i want you to get your piece of paper and on one half of the piece of paper i want you to <laughs> dance it's definitely good you like it get your colors and i want you to draw on one half of your page, um, I want you to draw your idea of a money tree. So while you're drawing, you can listen. Why am I doing that? Well, because sometimes while you're doing other things with your brain, you can actually absorb things subconsciously a little better, right? But also, we'll come back to this, okay? So get your piece of paper, and on one half of the page, I want you to draw your version of a money tree. What is a happy little money tree in your world? And you can listen as you draw. So the first thing I need you to know while you're drawing your happy little money tree on your piece of paper is that you get to make your cash flow planning process fun. It gets to be fun. If you hate it and it's boring and it makes you feel ick, like why would you keep doing it? right? Why would you keep going? Why would you keep doing that process? Why would you ever stick with it if it's not fun, right? If you're not enjoying it. So you get to enjoy it. So I wanted to give you a couple of ideas on how you can enjoy this process. One is gamification. Anything that you can make a game out of, 
becomes fun, right? Because you're like, oh, this is fun, right? I know people who have had um, like trackers for their money that was like a Candyland board, right? So they got to kind of play a little game with it. Um, I've seen people do paper chains where they got to take a paper chain off every time they paid a certain amount towards their debt. Or I've seen just like posters. You can make it visual, right? Make it visual in front of you where you have like a poster board where you get to track things. Where, um, you can color code it. You can use emojis. You can make sure there's automations. You can set something to like throw confetti at you when you hit a certain milestone. Like you can do whatever you want, but you get to make it fun. I know one of the things that we did, um, we had a, seer, um, a season of life where I had quit a full-time job and money got a little bit tighter. We've set up our cash flow plan such that we can basically live off of his income, um, but live is like all we can do. <laughs> and so it money was getting a little tight. And so I was like, let's play a game. Whichever one of us spends less in our allowance category this month gets $50 out of the other person's allowance next month. And really and truly, and be real honest with you guys, that was a way for me to convince myself to stop spending so much money because he's not the problem. <laughs> he never spends his whole allowance. It's always me. And so we made a little contest out of it. And I don't even remember who won at that point, but it was fun. I think I did because I got real serious about it. So you can make a little contest out of it, right? But you get to do the things that make it fun so that you actually want to keep going and you actually want to stick with it, right? You can get with friends, right? Do things with friends. This is why I built co-working sessions into Intuitive Money Mastery because I want that feeling of like, we're doing this together and we get to like have fun together and we get to, you know, have that camaraderie while you're doing things. So that's the first thing is make the process itself fun, okay? The second thing is build fun into the cash flow plan itself. So not only the process of cash flow planning gets to be fun, but you get to have fun with your money. I had a client once that she was like, okay, I decided we're just going to stop spending money. And I was like, please don't do that. And I was like, okay, so how much do you guys want to build in for like your fun money or your allowance? And they're like, oh, we're not going to do that. I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> I was like, you have to, you have to build in a level of fun into your life within your cash flow plan. Because again, if this is awful and you never get to have fun and you don't get to enjoy your life and there's no way for you to really like love what's going on in your world, why would you want to do it? Why would you want to be keep to be part of that? Why would you want to, what would motivate you to keep going? Right? So build fun into your actual cash flow plan. Um, and Y'all, enjoy the journey is part of my branding for a reason because it is a huge component of both my intuitive money framework, of my coaching, of my programs. Enjoying the process and enjoying the journey is a huge part of what helps you actually feel like you can get momentum and you want to keep going. We are coloring and wearing green wigs for a reason because this gets to be fun. It gets to be enjoyable. You get to have things that you love and that you enjoy. So share with me in the comments, if you're watching, share with me, what is something that you felt like would bring so much joy and would be fun for you to be able to build into your budget or into your cash flow plan that you've been stopping yourself from doing? What is it? What is the thing that you've wanted to do that would be fun that you haven't been doing that you want to build in to your cash flow plan because you get to. Okay. So um, I was going to sit here and draw with you guys and I realized I'd be way too distracted. So I did already draw my happy little money tree. I'm going to show you later, but I want you guys, as you're looking at this happy little money tree that you're drawing right now, I want you to release all judgment. Yep. That's right. Cause you're probably looking at it like, oh my gosh, it should look like this and it should look like that. What if it's this? What if it's that? I'm not a good drawer, right? Release all of the shoulds, release all of the guilt, all of the shame around the decision making of where your money goes. Because again, a cash flow plan, all it is, is a plan for where your money is going to go. It's a plan for the money that is flowing, the cash that's flowing in and out of your life, right? And so there's no judgment that needs to be associated with any of that. You get to decide what that looks like. You get to decide how you build fun into your world. And I'm hearing you. But Nicole, I don't get to have fun because I have to buy groceries. I hear you. I do. We will talk about prioritization tomorrow. Today we're talking about fun. 
Today we're talking about enjoying the journey because I'm telling you, priorities will come. The idea of prioritization will come. The idea of how do I make sure the right amount of money is in the right categories for the right reasons, that will come. But if you don't first give yourself permission to actually enjoy this process, to actually enjoy your life, none of the rest of it matters because then the entire process gets shrouded in judgment and guilt and shame where you have all of these shoulds just circling around in your brain and you feel like you're not allowed to do those things. You're not allowed to do nice things. My client Liz once, she was like, oh, I really need a new ice maker. Like it's just for fun. I'm like, it's just for me. And I just, I feel like I shouldn't spend my money on that. It's like, says who? Says who? Right? Who, who is telling you you should or shouldn't spend your money on X, Y, and Z, right? Are those people actually in charge of what happens to your money? Are those people actually in control of your life? No, right? So I'm telling you, let those things go. Release judgment about what your happy little money tree looks like. Release judgment about those things because money itself, the price tags on things, how many actual dollars you spend on X, Y, and Z has no level of morality. None. Are there things you could purchase that have morality attached? Sure, right? But if you do that immoral thing for $5 versus 500, it's still just as immoral, right? Regardless of how much money you spent on it, right? So the opposite is true. If you have something that is not inherently immoral, if you spend $5 on it versus 500, it's still not immoral. You're not a bad person because you chose to spend money on something, right? The money itself, in and of itself, has no morality. So you get to release all of the judgment around where your money actually goes. You get to decide what this looks like, right? You get to make the process fun. You can see I have like a whiteboard back there. Like I love whiteboards. I make things visual. The app that I use, I use emojis and it like I color code it and it flags me when I'm like doing something wrong. Like I love those visual things and it actually is fun for me to see the numbers tick down, right? It's fun for me that like if I overspend in a category and it turns red, I'm like, oh. it's like a game to be like how quickly and easily can I get the red to disappear, right? Make it fun. Make the process itself fun. We have allowances. My husband and I both have an allowance that we get to spend on anything, no questions asked, because there's no judgment. So release that level of judgment around what's happening with your money. Give yourself permission to have a freaking blast and enjoy this journey. Enjoy this process. The actual like cash flow planning structure and strategy, how to prioritize, even foundations around how to make peace with money, how to not judge yourself, how to not judge what's happening with your money. Those are things that I've included in inter, uh, intuitive money mindset or intuitive money mastery program. Those are things that I talk about in my coaching. Those are things that come in different uh, areas of this workshop. Right now, I just want you to focus on having fun. I want you to realize that this process of Planning out what happens to your money does not have to be burdensome. It does not have to be frustrating. It does not have to be scary. It doesn't have to be boring. It can be fun. You get to enjoy this process. So your homework for day one. Your homework for day one is first to share your drawing of your happy little money tree because I want to see what was in your mind when you thought of a happy little money tree? I want to see your drawing and you can hold it up next to your face so I can see your face too. And in that post, and I want you to post that in the group. And when you post that in the group, I want you to tell us what um, ways do you want to make your cash flow planning process or your cash flow plan itself more fun? How are you going to build fun and enjoyment and even a little bit more freedom, which we'll talk about more in the next couple of days? How are you going to build that into this process? Because part of creative cash flow planning is allowing the, the fun and enjoyment and creativity to actually be a part of it, right? That's part of this so that you actually love it. Because again, if you don't love what you're doing, you're not going to keep doing it. If I didn't love showing up for you guys looking like an idiot with green Afro wigs on, I wouldn't do it. Okay. But I love this. I love being here and getting you guys to pay attention. I love being here and getting you guys to go, oh my gosh, I actually could have fun with this. Oh my gosh, I actually could enjoy this process. I actually could stop worrying about those boring ass black and white spreadsheets and 
put some freaking color in them and add some emojis to them and make sure they automate and yell at me if I'm doing something wrong. Like whatever it is that you need to do, you get to build that into your system because this gets to be yours. This system gets to be something that actually feels good to you. Right? So that's your homework. Show me your happy little money tree drawing that you made and tell me how you are going to build more fun into your cash flow planning process because you deserve to enjoy the journey. All right? So tomorrow, tomorrow we are talking about um, how there's no such thing as mistakes. Y'all know Bob Ross is like, mm, there's no such thing as a mistake. He's a painter. You make a mistake, you just paint over it, right? So we're, we're going to talk about this. How do we um, stick with the plan when we feel like a failure, right? How do we adjust? How do we make it work, right? But first, like I said, we'll worry about that tomorrow. Today we're focused on fun, okay? So in the group, post a picture of your happy little money tree. I will post mine, but I'll show you really fast. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here's my happy little money tree. Okay, so post a picture of your happy little money tree with a post about what you are going to do to add more fun into your cash flow planning process. Okay. I will. I can't wait to see your posts. I will see you guys tomorrow. As always, trust yourselves and have a ton of fun and enjoy the journey. See y'all tomorrow.